My name is Apollonia Agonoi Stais. I was born in a plantation house in Spreckelsville, Maui, Camp 11, on February 8, 1941. My father came to Hawaii when he was in his early 20s, about 1930. Like most immigrant families and people wanting to have a better life, it was always, I'm going to make a lot of money, then I will return to the Philippines and we will have a good life. Apollonia's father, Matias Mendoza Agunoy, worked as a laborer for the sugar plantation in Spreckelsville, Maui. In 1942, when Apollonia was less than one year old, her family moved to Lanai City, where her father worked for the Hawaiian Pineapple Company. The whole island was nothing but pineapples. So my father was a simple laborer, planting pineapples, and he worked picking pineapples. And then later on, of course, he worked uh, weeding the fields and whatnot. We had a plantation house with two bedrooms and living room, very tiny, tiny house. And our front yard, where most people had well manicured lawn, ours was filled with kamote, with kapatiti, with paria, with eggplant, and okra saluyot, and corn, and peanuts. My mother usually, like clockwork, at three o'clock, she would go out in front of the house and pick all the vegetables. Then by four o'clock, she'll be cooking in it. When my father came home at about five o'clock or so, we'd have fresh vegetables for dinner practically every night. To supplement the family's income, Apollonia's mother, Romualda the Kiwaguan, did laundry for the single laborers on Lanai. My father built an attachment to our small house so we could house um, a laundry area where she had two washing machines. To this very day, I know exactly what brand it was. It was called Easy, E-A-Z-Y, and that's probably how I learned how to spell Easy also. So she had a routine. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, she would iron. Thursday, she would mend. Sometimes the tatas had uh, holes in their shirts and whatnot, so she would mend. The Friday she would rest. Saturday morning, she would sort out the clothes. My father built a wagon for her to put all the clothes that were going to be delivered. So Saturday afternoon, my two other sisters and I would go with my mother and we'd deliver the clothes to uh, Tata Johnny, Tata Sito, and everyone else. My mother was not educated in a school, although she really wanted to. Whatever she learned, she did it by herself, like she educated herself learning how to read and write Ilocano. She never learned how to speak proper English. She always had the idea that one day they would return to the Philippines. So English was not her language. Their dream of um, Wanting to go back never really happened, although they did try, but it didn't materialize. The things that my father did on the night, and most of the Filipinos, they would do cockfighting. And there was a cockpit in front of our house as we were growing up. So my father used to bring them in and sell them and also fight them. My mother learned never to argue with my father and every Sunday she would take the money, hundreds of dollars, you know, all in 20s, and she would kiss the money, and kunana, aksubli kantoa. So she would say in English, please come back, and most of the time the money did come back. My mother, of course, could not speak English well, so she always called mayonnaise, mayonnaise. And I told someone that my mother had made me tuna sandwich with mayonnaise. And this girl, she's a year older than I, she says, oh, I always thought it was called mayonnaise. So later on, I discovered that it was mayonnaise to my mother, but mayonnaise to English. And, you know, speaking in that light, learning how to speak well, 
I had a high school teacher, science teacher, who said, you know, you come back after school. I want to work on your English. He had a University of Hawaii speech book that he gave me, so he said, now, okay, say all these words. So one was C-O-T-T-O-N. So I said, oh, cotton. No, it's not cotton, it's cotton. Oh, okay, cotton. Then the other one was S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T. Oh, straight. No, it's not straight, it's straight. And you know, because of those caring teachers, I think I owe them a lot of thanks for, you know, taking me up. Nobody would have told me that I shouldn't say straight. I had to say straight and I had to say cotton. My cousin Rosita graduated in 1951, eight years older than I. And that's when Dole Company decided to have a Dole Scholarship. And that Dole Scholarship was going to be awarded to a child of plantation workers. So my cousin Rosita applied and I thought, oh my God, she was a valedictorian of the class of 51. She was very active in school and everything and everyone thought she was going to get the scholarship. However, to this day, I'm really sad that she didn't get it because she was my model when I was growing up. I thought, oh, one of these days, I'm going to be just like my cousin Rosita. I'm going to do well, just like she did. I'm going to do everything she did so that maybe one day I can apply for the scholarship and, and um, become a dull scholar. So, because at a young age, I already had goals, you know, um, I guess, Having goals is kind of a, I don't want to call it an immigrant quality, but if you look at immigrants you know, coming to our country even today, you will find that they have different goals from people who are born here. They don't take things for granted, and we didn't. My parents all said, you study hard. So that's what we did, and that's what I did. Apollonia won the prestigious Dole Scholarship when she graduated Lanai High School in 1959. The honor reached far beyond earning her the opportunity to go to college. My father was so happy that I received the scholarship. He was more impressed when he'd walk around town and the Lunas, the supervisor, would say, oh, hello, Mr. Aganoe. And he felt that um, when he was addressed as Mr. Aganoi, even though he was a laborer, it, was, it felt good to him. So I gave that to him, so I'm, I'm happy for that. <laughs> then my father had this ambition that if I were an executive secretary to the boss, that was it. You were on top of the world. And you know, at that time, that was a glamorous job because the Japanese lady who had that job always wore heels always had her hair combed nicely, always was dressed well. So, you know, that was a good job because you couldn't have your hair done every week. You couldn't have nice clothes if you didn't have money, if you didn't have a good job. But I chose to become a teacher. When I went to college in 1959, I looked around to find Filipino students. I think there was only one other Filipino girl so I think that's when I realized, oh, there's a lot that we can do that we haven't done, you know, as, as Filipinos. In January 1964, Apollonia graduated from the University of Hawaii at Manoa with a Bachelor of Education. And like so many idealistic young people of her generation, she joined the Peace Corps and became one of the first Filipino Americans to serve in the Philippines. I thought growing up in a plantation town like Lanai City would prepare me for the Philippines. It did not. I had to catch rainwater to have something clear to drink. We bathed in the rivers when we bathed at all and slept on the dusty floor in the barrios. After returning from the Peace Corps, Apollonia married her college sweetheart, Gary Stice. My parents wanted me to marry a Filipino boy, but Ilocano boy. Well, I didn't marry a Filipino boy of Ilocano ancestry. So, oh my gosh, we, we went through a lot of rigmarole about that. But um, 
Eventually, they came around, as uh, most parents will. And with Gary being my husband, he has learned how to understand Ilocano because whenever my mother would uh, would speak, he would understand it. And to this day, you know, I speak to him in phrases in Ilocano. Gary was always interested in giving the girls Filipino names. We have Ligaya, because of course Ligaya means happiness. She's the oldest. And then a year later, Parluman, and then two years later, Jade. So I have three daughters. But Parluman was a very beautiful actress that we used to watch. We used to watch their movies. Every Monday, it was Filipino movie time. In those days, all of the Tagalog movies were all in Tagalog. It was not, there were no English subtitles. So um, I learned a few Tagalog phrases because I could hear them all the time. But there was no translation, so it was always, Mom, what did they say? What did they say? You know, so. But a lot of it, you know, we could kind of make out what they were talking about. Wapo mi Diyos isala ka na kami, dagiti kabusur mi, tandaan santa nga cross, Nagansyama, Anak, Espiritu Santo. Amen. Growing up, you know, I say a lot of prayer that my mother taught me, that I taught the girls. And uh, to this day, um, Ligaya Parliament and Jade still remember that prayer. And then with my grandchildren, I do that with, with them too. So they, they also know that prayer. And at the end of each of our prayer, we had to kneel in front of my mother while we were reciting this. She would tap our forehead and say, now you be a good girl in Filipino. Respect was one of the, the main things that my, my parents taught us. You always called older people Nana and Tata. You never called them without addressing them with Manang or Manong. Other than respect, I think the other thing that um, I can relate or take back and you know, do with my family is uh, they loved their family. They were always talking about their family and how we should always be together and not argue, not fight, and just be a closely knit family. And I think family is one of the things that um, I didn't really write it down or think about it, but you know, it, it just kind of grows with with me because you know even today we always have our family get togethers and we invite all of our relatives so we're we're still keeping the family together my mother was very good you know so she would tell us all those filipino tales and then she would always tell us stories about her family who all her cousins were and where she came from and what so that's how i learned my culture through my mother I learned through the years that the values I grew up with, respect for people and culture, love for one's family, persevering through the hard times, and finding strength through it all are the values that made me who I am today. And having these values in my life is what it means to be a Filipina.